What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And about two weeks back, I made a Francis Rage video targeting the company Blizzard and their action and choice to shut down a private server that gave players access to the vanilla World of Warcraft experience. And in that video, I was very, very harsh about the game, uh, the company, and everyone else involved. And I, a lot of people have asked me if that's how I really feel, so I wanted to make a quick video today clarifying that. First thing I have to say is that I'm a huge Blizzard fan. I have always been a huge Blizzard fan. Ever since I played Warcraft 2 for the first time and went out and purchased my very first PC so that I could play Warcraft 2 at home, I have bought every game they've ever made and I've played them religiously. I love them as a company. I also think that right now today there are some of the most talented game developers to ever exist working on games at Blizzard. I think the folks who made Overwatch are brilliant. I put dozens of hours into that game. Pre-launch, I plan to play dozens of more once it's live. It is one of the best games I've ever played, and certainly the best game in its genre. Uh, the guys over at Hearthstone got me to make room for a second card game in my life. I play as much Hearthstone these days as I do the M Magic the Gathering, and as a 22-year veteran of Magic the Gathering, that's unheard of. And even the Heroes team managed to get me to do something I thought I'd never do again. Give a shit about a MOBA after quitting League of Legends. Which, and no offense to this team, speaks volumes to me about the people that are in charge of World of Warcraft right now. I no doubt that they're doing their best with what limited resources they have, but they cannot get me to really care about an MMORPG again. Which is a shame, because I crave an MMORPG. I want to play a game with you guys, I want to stream it five nights a week, I want to get back into that type of game, and for whatever reason, they will not provide that for me. And that's not to say that they're doing a bad job with World of Warcraft. They are probably doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing to retain as many players as humanly possible. They are managing to survive in a time and era where many MMORPGs are dead on arrival. Uh, they are managing to stay alive when there's only a handful of competitors who can even keep the doors open. They are doing something right. Clearly, they're doing something right. It's just not right for me. A lot of the times, I feel like that's my problem, and it's not Blizzard's problem, because... I'm a bit of a connoisseur of MMORPGs. I played pretty much everything from Meridian back in the day to Blade and Soul when it released late last year. I've experimented with all of these games, and most of them can't really hook me in the way that World of Warcraft originally hooked me. The two games that really got their hooks into me was EverQuest, which I put 365 played days into. I played that game like it was my career, only breaking from that to switch over to vanilla World of Warcraft when I got invited to the beta, and I played from beta all the way to the end of Lich King. I've thought long and hard about this, and those two games are fairly vastly different. The one common theme they have, though, is the social aspect of the game. You could be someone that mattered in early World of Warcraft or early EverQuest. Uh, you could be a famous traitor, the only person on a server that had a particular recipe. Or you could be a famous troll that ran trains through a particular zone. Uh, you could be in a guild that matters. You could be in the best guild on your server. And if you were the best uh, player of a class in that guild, then you were the best player on that server. Server communities meant something. Everybody knew each other. We all talked to each other. We had uh, community forums in which we talked about what was going on in our server. It was a live, vibrant community. And I think a lot of that has to do with game design, because the games used to move a lot slower. It was more difficult to get into zones. There were exclusive things that only a handful of players got to do. If you got a piece of loot, it was entirely possible that you would be the only person on your server to get that piece of loot for months and months and months, maybe ever. Sometimes clearing a top-end dungeon meant running a raid full of super good players who were very, very well equipped. Even clearing a dungeon to get one of the items you needed to complete one of these raids could sometimes require a very specific group makeup of very good players with very good gear. And you, if you fit that role, you could be a very important player for a lot of people on your server. And think about it, we all remember those guildmates 
who are always online ready to run you through a dungeon to help you get that particular item or particular key or quest piece that you needed. We all remember that guy on the server who would power level you in a certain dungeon and help you get the pieces of gear you needed for your class or help you complete your class quest. When we had to rely on each other, we remembered each other's names, we remembered each other's guilds, and sometimes we would even pass off the torch and you and I would become the person everyone remembers because they helped. I don't know what it is about the last few World of Warcraft expansions that make the game different than that. I'm no game designer, I'm no expert, I can't tell you what it is. And I will say the last few expansions I find fun. I buy them, I, I level up a few characters, I run some dungeons with my friends, I do a few pickup raids. It's okay, it's, it's enjoyable, it's fun to spend time with those friends, but at the end of the day, it just doesn't feel important. Almost everything I did in the early years of World of Warcraft felt important. It felt like it mattered. It didn't just matter to me, it mattered to my guilds, it mattered to my friends, it mattered to people on our servers. What I was doing matters. And whenever I talk to somebody else who's quit World of Warcraft over the years, we pretty much always agree that that's the problem. We feel like just another cog in this giant machine. We feel like a meaningless, mindless player that's stuck into the looking for group area. Or sometimes we group with our friends and it feels okay. It feels feels kind of fun, but at the end of the day, the social aspect is gone, and it just feels uninteresting. It feels like a rail shooter. It's like a rail R MMORPG. You're just following the, the line and the path that's laid for you. You know that there's no real resistance there, and you're eventually just going to get there if you're willing to sink the time into it. And since it's a foregone conclusion, to me, that takes the challenge out of it. It's just a time sink, and I get bored, and I want to move on. But look, not everybody feels the way that I do, and I trust the guys over there at World of Warcraft. And if their research, if their marketing data says that this is the best way for them to make money and retain players, then this is what they should do. I'm okay with that. I can find my kicks somewhere else. The problem is nobody out there is creating games that fit this bill. They are all using the exact same market research you guys are, and they're creating games that are almost exact duplicate clones of modern day World of Warcraft, and they all have the exact same problems you guys have. The guys over at Sony Online Entertainment, of course, saw this need and decided to respond to it. And the way they did that is they managed to create these retro servers that allowed you to play like vanilla EverQuest, and once a guild had done everything there was to do in vanilla EverQuest and the server had completed it, they released the next expansion a month later, and the next expansion a month later, and so on and so forth. And then it's allowed players who are looking for that hardcore experience, who are looking for that social experience, who are looking for that nostalgia trip to go back and play together. And we did. We resubscri resubscribed, we reformed our guilds, we hung out, we played, we revisited that content and that experience, and it was fucking awesome. And this, of course, led us World of Warcraft players to ask you to do the exact same thing. But you guys told us time and time again, no, we won't do it. No, you don't really want that. No, we don't want to do it. Maybe mar market research says it's impossible. They don't want to waste the time and resources. We just don't have the source code. Who knows? But for whatever reason, you guys said no. And that's why these private servers crop up. That's why they exist today. And that's why every time you take one of these down, three more are going to crop up in its stead. And a lot of people wonder why this can't happen. Some people say it's because Blizzard won't do it. Some people say it's because they can't do it. Maybe they don't have the source code or whatever reason. I gotta say, though, if the skeleton crew that was left over there at Sony Online Entertainment managed to get this put together for EverQuest, I absolutely guarantee you the very talented team over there at Blizzard can do this. It's a matter of will they. And you know, I actually think that they will, because now that there's several online petitions floating around, now that we've had this big public outcry, now that we've literally begged them for it in YouTube videos, I think eventually they will come to their good senses, realize there's millions of us who want to do this, that we will all resubscribe to be able to do it, and that means millions and millions of dollars for the company. Eventually, they will figure that out. I obviously don't think it'll happen before Legion because I think that it's going to take some time. I think it's going to take some work. And they definitely do not want to compete with their own upcoming expansion. I'm kind of glad it's not going to happen before Legion because I think Legion looks like a hell of an expansion, one that I can't wait to play and broadcast on Twitch. I'm looking forward to Legion. I think they're going to get a lot of things right with it. But statistically speaking, it'll probably be more of the same. And players like me that come back for a short period of time won't get what we want from it. 
We'll enjoy it for a little while, but then we'll be still craving that hardcore social experience. And how great would it be if they announced that retro server right about that time, three months after the expansion launches, and we continue to resubscribe, not just for a few more months, but maybe for a few more years as we work our way through that old content. That would be awesome. Then again, maybe it'll never happen. Maybe it's just a pipe dream. Maybe it's way more complicated than we players realize, and it's just not going to happen. And, and if that's the case, I, I guess for a lot of us, the World of Warcraft killer we were always waiting for is never going to come. The game that killed World of Warcraft for us would be the expansions for World of Warcraft that changed the game and made it so different from what we loved. And I don't think anybody's ever going to make a game like that again. And if that's true, I think that's going to make a lot of us super, super sad. And maybe that's a good thing, because I certainly like sleep, and I have gotten a lot more of it since the end of Lich King, and I retired from World of Warcraft. I've gotten a lot more sleep. Guys, this is just one man's opinion. I could be wrong. I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I'll speak with you again very soon. And my World of Warcraft buddies, I'll see you during Legions.